Hey guys, Tucker here. I want to talk about my SSF League restart. I started this about three to four days ago and it is on a Bleed Bow Gladiator. I leveled as a Bleed Glow Gladiator all the way from level two all the way to level 90. And I'll do a quick map and then I'll tell you how to level it and all this other stuff. Uh, I do not have an Elder Bleed Bow. You do not need an Elder Bleed Bow to play this build. You do need an Elder Bleed Bow to do all the crazy endgame stuff. But I have cleared up to tier 12 maps currently without it, and I've been fine. Um, and that is with Split Arrow on a 6 link through the Lion Eyes Glare, but it's only a damage uh, 5 link because the 6 link is the peer support gem. And I very recently accidentally crafted a 6 link puncture, but I cleared up to 12 tier 12 maps on a 5 link puncture using the Lion Eyes bow. The thing which makes this a very cool SSF build is there's lots of uh, crafting goals that are quite easily accessible and a lot of your best gear you can farm through div cards. So there is a div card in Act 6 called the Lion uh, that you get from killing the unique boss in Mudflats and I'll show you how to do that after this and it will drop any Lion Eyes item. So it can be the chest, which you use basically forever until you get to very high levels of gear, or you swap to Rain of Arrows, which you only do when you get to very high levels of gear. Um, it can give you the Lion Eyes Bow, which is a perfectly good starter bow. It can give you the shield, which is completely worthless. It can give you the boots, which is completely worthless. And it can give you the jewel, which if you get the jewel, you never take the jewel off because the jewel is like insane for this build and would highly recommend it. Now, I don't have the jewel. You don't need the jewel. Uh, the reason why bleed is very popular, basically since last... These fire tornadoes are annoying. Basically, so, I'm going to let that just wear out. Uh, since last leak is because of the introduction of ensn ah, ensnaring arrow. Uh, the way that ensnaring arrow... I'm just going to do that real quick. The way that ensnaring arrow works... I never liked this boss. He's a bit spooky with juiced up delirium. Um... The way that ensnaring arrow works is it makes the target always count as moving. So you just apply a puncture on the boss, hit it with ensnaring arrow, uh, which I've currently got linked to curse on hit vulnerability, and then the thing dies. So yeah, that's how it maps. Um, it wasn't the cleanest demonstration. I'll pick up all the loot at the end, and I'll do a little bit more of this map just to get the metamorph up, and then you can see against the metamorph. You can see the bleed explosions do a lot of work, and my gear really isn't anything special. This is a very good build that you would like to play in a trade league environment, but you don't have to be in trade to play it. And I'm just doing this as an example that you can play this with nothing, because I had a lot of people saying, but Taki, you can't play this in SSF. You don't have the bow, but Taki, you can't play this in SSF. You don't have the helmet. Taki, would you use the helmet? Why aren't you using the helmet? I would like to use the uh, Snipe Elysium helmet. It's a very powerful helmet. I, I don't have one because I play an SSF. There's lots of very cool things to this build. Do you need the Rishalada's Coil? No. Would you like the Rishalada Coil? Yes, it's very strong. Okay, so that's most of all the uh, samples. And then I'll run around after this video and pick up all the loot and all the maps that I left on the floor. So. Uh, we've got Catalysts. Ooh. That was cheap. I don't like that. You can see the puncture does really good damage once you can hit a uh, boss with it. Uh, I'll go with the eh, currency cash weapon. That's annoying. I'm not going to drop down to the callus. I'm going to go for the rare weapon instead. Oh, hang on. Never mind. I recently flipped all of my gems and I'm not on a level uh, 20. Uh, puncture. So you can see that I got the big puncture up, so I'll just press all molten shell and then just run around. Um, this is a very safe bossing character once you've actually got your character somewhat established because once you've put the big puncture on the boss, all you need to do is ensnaring arrow. Refreshing your puncture is a DPS increase um, because while your punctures don't stack, I'm not stacking bleeds through Crimson Dance or anything like that. Um, the biggest hit gives you the biggest bleed. So you're just fishing for whatever gives you the biggest hit. So what gear do I have? So this is my okay-ish bow. 
Um, I just ID'd it as is. Um, and it was tier 2 physical and happened to have the tier 2 chance to bleed bot on there. A tier 3 physical citadel bow with crafted rank 3 fizz is a DPS increase over a lion eyes glare. You don't need the lion eyes glare. You don't need to do any lion farming if you don't want to. But I would say be prepared to do some lion farming for this build. Uh, my links are Brutality, Chance to Bleed, Puncture, Vicious Projectiles, Deadly Ailments, Swift Affliction. Chance to Bleed, Brutality, Split Arrow, Vicious Projectiles, Deadly Ailments, and then the pierce is coming from the chest piece. Uh, every other piece of gear is just life and resistances. On my jewelry, I have a little bit of flat fizz, um, which does help my damage a little bit, but it's mostly just a case of get as much life as you can, get as much resist as you can. My quiver isn't anything special. Um, on hunter quiver, hunter gloves, hunter amulet, you can get physical damage over time multiplier. And with hunter boots, you can roll bleed steel damage faster. Um, faster ailments is a more multiplier because they basically just do the damage faster and you're not stacking ailments. Uh, it's not like a poison build or anything. So the faster they do the damage, it's just, it's just a bigger multiplier, basically. Um, so your ideal uh, character would be Hunter Quiver, Hunter Amulet, Hunter Gloves with dot multiplier there with a Warlord's Vulnerability Cast on Hit Ring. Because I don't have a Warlord's Vulnerability Cast on Hit Ring, I'm having to run Ensnaring Arrow, Vulnerability, GMP, Cast on Hit. I haven't actually got the main support gem linked anywhere on my character. Uh, the MAME support gem is an additional multiplier. Most people have a Ensnaring Arrow GMP MAME, either linked to a Mirage Archer or a Ballista Totem, but I don't have that, sadly. Uh, otherwise, for Auras, you want to run Flesh and Stone, uh, Pride, or Malevolence. The main reason to run Malevolence is for Watcher's Eye mods. Uh, the advantage of running Pride over Malevolence is it doesn't need any int. Currently, my only gem which really needs int is the Curse on Hit, which is something that you will want to drop. Um, but this does mean you do need some int on the build. Um, otherwise, it's just a case of run of all molten shocks. It's an iron reflexes build, and you're good to go. The one piece of like fluff tech I have in my build is I have Enduring Cry, Blood Magic, Dash, Second Wind. It's not optimal, but I have it and I enjoy it. Uh, I have my Enduring Cry on left click. You can see it automatically triggers whenever I walk. This in conjunction with Rallying Cry, and you so you need uh, Battle Cry for this to work. Instant War Cries. The reason why this is good is I have 100% uptime, outmatch and outlast, 10% reduced physical orientation while at maximum endurance charges. Between this and this, for three skill points, I get 22% physical damage reduction. That makes my armor even more powerful. It makes my character feel a lot tankier, and it gives me a nice, like, just burst of life sustain because it just gives me burst life sustain. It's good. I like it. This is what my tree currently looks like. I'll now show you what your trees should look like while leveling this build. And again, this is from an SSF point of view. So from normal, you just want to rush down, grab deadly draw, heavy draw, then can grab bravery, come across, grab dirty techniques, iron reflexes, cloth and chain for the resists. One of the things which makes this such a nice build for SSF is you get access to so much resistances. I was uh, capped res all the way from Act 1 to Katava pretty much. And I didn't need to change any gear after killing Katava. Uh, take Battle Cry if you want to the Enduring Cry meme. If you don't want to, drop those three points. Bloodletting, Soul of Steel, Bloodless, Red Storm. If you need resistances, then come through to Diamond Skin. If you don't need resistances, come up, get Re Resolute Technique, then grab Diamond Skin. That point, you want to grab uh, Marauder Life, uh, Psalm Life. If you're playing this in a trade league and you already have good Cluster Jewels, I would have taken a good Cluster Jewel setup before. If you don't have Cluster Jewels, obviously I didn't was in SSF. Take all the life nodes. If you've got the Cluster Jewels, take that early, then do that traveling. This is what my current tree looks like. My finished tree will be a large Cluster Jewel splitting into two mediums, into two smalls. If I need more int, I would come up that way. Otherwise, I'd fill this in. If I can get myself a Lionized Jewel, I'll fill this in. And I'll take these points, these points, and these points. Lionized Jewel, if you don't know, converts nearby um, weapon nodes to affect bows. So all of these nodes only give a whole bunch of um, ailment damage with bows. This gives a 10 dot multi for bleeds. This is generic. You could actually anoint that if you wanted to. 
cleaving doesn't actually get hit by lion eyes anymore, but it still gives you 30% increased damage with hits and ailments against bleeding enemies. Bleeds you inflict steel damage 50% faster, so basically a more multiplier and 30% increased damage. It's very, very strong. Definitely run a lion eyes jewel if you have one. If you don't have a lion eyes jewel, you don't need to have one, but you know, then you need to rely more on cluster jewels and having good bow. If I get access to a timer's jewel, I will put a timer's jewel in here. And hopefully you'd get Divine Flesh and I'd convert the Iron Grip, but I probably won't get a Time Jewel for a very long time. Uh, root out of this way just to save some skill points because you need to save skill points to fit in all this extra fluff. Which go crazy on the Time Jewels and everything. How did I level this build without any gear? What do you do about bows and stuff like that? There is a very good recipe that you can use from the very get-go, which is a Blacksmith Whetstone... And then this works for any weapon. Uh, and then a magic or rare rustic sash. But a, rustic, a rare rustic sash is better. Gives you a uh, percent fizz bow back. So then you would take this. Uh, you could then just craft fizz or you just org or eagle. And you just do this a couple of times while leveling. If you wet sewn up the bow before you do it, you'll get even more fizz. And yeah, you just do this every now and again. Always do it on the slowest base possible because you want just the biggest fizz hit. You don't care about the attack speed. Do that like four or five times while leveling and it will carry you all the way through into maps and you'll be absolutely fine. Um, I would highly recommend just picking up every single Rustic Sash while you're leveling so you're not having to waste uh, currency doing that stuff. That's what I did. I just saved up a bunch and I was good to go. Uh, your Flask setup, Jade Flask, Granite Flask, Quartz Flask, Quicksilver, Life Flask. If you want to use Eternals, use Eternals, otherwise use Divines. I'll leave links to uh, POBs, everything down below. Uh, your links for leveling, Split Arrow, Chance to Bleed, Pierce, that will carry you. Once you get Puncture, also have Puncture, Chance to Bleed. Uh, in Act 2, you get Vicious Projectiles, so your 4 link would be Split Arrow, Chance to Bleed, Pierce, Vicious Projectiles, and you would then have a 3 link puncture chance to bleed vicious projectiles then once you get access to your 31 and 38 gems you then want to add brutality and deadly ailments in there and you just go for whatever setup you need based on your colors but i used uh just a four link split arrow and a four link four link puncture and that carried me all the way to maps if you can fit a maim into your setup great uh while leveling i used ensnaring arrow just maim mirage archer and that was great. Once I got Cast on Hit Vulnerability, I added Cast on Hit Vulnerability into the build. You've got a couple of flex gem slots. The Blood Magic isn't needed there. And then um, a lot of people don't run Cast on Hit. You can just manually Vulnerability. Uh, so I could have Ensnaring or GMP Maim and then manually Vul, but I don't really want to do that. And if you have a uh, Vulnerability Ring, that's another link you save. So you've got three open sockets that you can kind of play with whatever you want. It's very flexible. If you have the Snipe Helmet, uh, you can have your Puncture. Snipe Helmet is the highest damage you will ever get this build. You can have your Puncture in there. You then have a six-link uh, Rain of Arrows or Spiller in your boat and use a Combs Chest if you want to. I wouldn't use a Combs Chest. I would rather go full utility. My ideal chest piece for this build, if I can get my hands on one, would actually be a Perfect Form. Uh, perfect Form gives a bunch of evasion. It also gives Phase Acro. It also gives Arctic Armor. Arctic Armor is very good when you're standing still. You're standing still a lot when you're doing snipe. There's just like synergy there. So yeah, that's what I'm hopefully eventually going for. Farm some tulls. Get Snowblind Grace. Upgrade it into a perfect form. Farm some Yulacrums. Let's get my Elder Bow. Hopefully get the Snipe Helmet. But yeah, this will carry me all the way through. And finally, before I go, I just want to show you how good my RNG has been. So I've done like pre pretty decently just like farming up a good amount of currency. I've been blowing through Chaos just like getting good crafts on gear. But I've collected some pretty nice items in my three to four days of SSF. Much the annoyance of chat, I haven't rerolled. I got a Kostri's Malice drop in like my second or third map. I then got another Kostri's Malice drop yesterday. Uh, I got a Hollow Palm uh, when I was still in white maps. I got the Hedges, which doesn't seem like that great of an item, but it's actually a pretty solid item. It's like a tier one rarity item. I got that in uh, day two. I got a Cold Iron Point. I got the Carcass Jack. I got a very well-rolled pair of Sintrax. I got two pairs of Hemophilia Gloves. These matter uh, if I were to go champion. 
A lot of people start Gladiator, then respec Champion, because Champion is a lot tankier. It does a lot less damage, but it is a lot tankier, and you use the Hemophilia for the uh, Bleed Explosions of that build. I'll eventually double corrupt these, see what I get. Maybe I'd run them. I got Apex Rage Voidbringer, which is very nice if I do Archmage shenanigans. I've had like three or four tabulars. I didn't use any tabulars while playing this character. I just happened to get them when I was in maps. And I also dropped the Explosive Trap does additional explosion, which is the highest uh, enchant. Ideally, I would have gotten the Uber version, which gives two additional explosions. But Explosive Trap is very strong. Octavian played Explosive Trap as his league start. It's very, very powerful. I also got the Tinker Skin. So yeah, I'm basically going to be playing SSF for quite a while. I'm just going to only play this build because playing just one build and pushing one build is the best way to progress in Path of Exile. When you spam reroll, that's when bad things happen. Uh, but I've got a Cosprey's character queued up. If I can get a second cold on point, I would very much like to play a Poison BV build. Um, I've got some Archmage stuff, maybe some trap stuff going on. Yeah, I don't know. I'm really enjoying SSF. I'm having a lot of fun. This is what my Atlas looks like. Just progressing through. Would highly recommend this build. I'm Taki. Have a good day. Bye-bye.